Hello, I'm Conrad Edgebeck and this is Pro and Con. Today, my guest is Matt Fowles from the Strathbogie Hills of Victoria. Um, Matt, that's in Australia, by the way. Now, Matt, you are a lawyer. I, you I started have. off as a lawyer and you took down your shingle to start a winery. Tell me about the, the eureka moment when, when you decided to quit law. And, and go for making wine. It almost was a eureka moment. I was uh, sitting in the law firm one day, a big high rise in Melbourne, and uh, I looked around the room and there was such a lack of uh, inspiration for me there. And our family have an agricultural background and I've always loved wine. So uh, I was looking for an opportunity. And uh, you know, within weeks of me having this moment where uh, you know, these, uh, these guys who are unhealthy and unhappy and they were my uh, future uh, position. I thought, I, I can't be here. I've got to be outdoors and with nature. So, um, yeah, I had that thought and then uh, this opportunity presented at the same time and it was a no-brainer. What was the opportunity that presented itself? So the, the opportunity was uh, a winery that, um, a beautiful winery that was built um, with borrowed money and consultants, this uh, high-rolling uh, Coca-Cola executive. Uh, Is Sam Plunkett? No, 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 actually it's a guy called, uh, oh, anyway. Um, oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so they, they uh, my under understanding is they uh, uh, were selling uh, a lot of bottles of Coke and they imagined they could do the same thing with wine and they built this business plan that was all very exciting in the heady days of the, the booming uh, Australian wine industry. And uh, they built a beautiful winery, no doubt about it, but promptly went broke and uh, actually then reformed with another group and went broke again. So. Um, that was the opportunity. It was near my family's, um, you know, history in agricultural terms. So it was just this nice little opportunity to get into a beautiful facility, and then uh, in a beautiful region that uh, we knew and understood well. Which is Strathbogie Hills. Correct. Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, this morning I Google mapped? Uh, I think it's your winery on Lambling Gully Road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the cellar door. Yeah. That's the cellar door. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, frankly, it looks like a, an island of green. Uh -huh. <laughs> In an ocean of scrubland all around. Yeah, is that yeah. fairly accurate? Yeah, look, it's a it's a really um, s scrappy kind of hard region. You know, in terms of grow growing livestock, it's very difficult. Um, it's not very productive, and it's because this these granite um, boulders, which are all exposed, uh, is the weather is the you know parent rock to the the soil, and so the soil is this decomposed ancient granite, nutrient poor, which is difficult to grow grass. You know, really productive grass in for livestock. But of course, that um, tough conditions is terrific for growing vines. So, um, yeah, it does look like that. We've got these sort of islands of green in, in amongst this uh, really harsh landscape. Mm -hmm. When you look at it from 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 above, which is mm -hmm. how the Google satellite does it, yeah, right. You've got your vines going in like three different directions, uh -huh. right? Why is that? So, is that how you got them? <laughs> Yeah, well, partly how we got them, but also we've planted uh, new blocks, and we're always, you know, it's interesting times at the moment with, uh, you know, global warming, whether you choose to accept it or not. Mm -hmm. The reality is the um, the climate is uh, behaving differently. The, you know, in, in for us, we've noticed that. So we're exploring ways all the time to um, to uh, I guess work with um, nature on that. And one of the things we do is we harvest different parts of the blocks um, at different times and so on. And then also we're looking at different varieties and different row orientation so that we can uh, have a bunch of different blocks to choose from. So if we so have- Speed them up or slow them down in well, harvest? Well, both actually. And so yeah. sometimes you have a big shaggy canopy to slow them down and a right. you know, tighter crop, more erect canopy. So it gives us maximum flexibility. So if the season goes to these sometimes big and hot ones, we have uh, options. And then if it goes to these uh, uh, cooler ones, we have options. Um, you know, we can get in there and strip leaves and, and bits and pieces. So it's all about um, options. It's all about fine tuning and making sure we've got, uh, we're, we're constantly learning and making sure we know what the, the dirt does best. What's the elevation there? So ranges between, on our vineyards, about, about 450 to 500 and, 10 meters. Right, so so where do you get your water? Is water an issue for you? Water, oh, oh, generally no. You know, we actually have relatively a lot of water, so we have about 440 megalitres stored um, as winter fill, so big dams. Like big, big, oh, dam, like, yeah, yeah. like pools or yeah, like, and lakeettes. They feel like lakeettes, right? The lakes, they're, they're absolutely huge and, uh, and, and quite a high um, amount of water relative to the, the vines we have. But then as little as three years ago, they're full now, but as little as three years ago, I was literally standing on the damn wall um, with my wife saying, is the job done? You know, is, do we pack up and uh, yeah. move to- Is the, it over? Yeah, because we had this puddle at the bottom of the, of the, the dam, the lake, the now puddle, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, it was desperate. But then we've had these three very wet, um, or two very wet summers, and uh, we're totally recharged. So right, you I can't you can't plug into like um, the, the 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 city water. And no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> it's a scarce commodity in Australia, that's for sure. Right. So you've had two wet vintages. Yeah, really wet vintages. Mm -hmm. Vintages or during the year or right at harvest or. Two thousand and ten was a cooler year, so that was sort of a, a return to cool and. A little bit wetter. Yeah. Two thousand eleven was wet. Yeah. Properly wet and right through vintage. So, so did you did and, and right through? So did you lose it or what yeah. did you do? So our red harvest um, in two thousand eleven, um, we lost a lot of, mm -hmm. um, with the exception of Pino actually. And then two thousand twelve, um, we had a, a monster amount of rain in spring and then relatively dry summer until March, where we had another bout of rain, not nearly as wet as um, eleven during vintage, so actually we're, we're fine. And then after 2012 vintage, this winter has been incredibly wet, so. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you grow everything in that area? You said this is, that's your cellar door and you've got the three, the three big blocks yep. sort of around it. Um, do you grow everything there or do you, you, you have vineyards elsewhere? Do you buy from others? The cellar door is actually uh, almost an ornamental vineyard for us. Historically in Australia, if you, if you wanted a cellar door, you had to have a vineyard. And our cellar door happens to be located on Australia's largest um, freeway. Yes. We wanted that location near to the road for obvious reasons. So we had to plant a vineyard to have a cellar door. So it's a, it's kind of a um, an anomaly. Actually, all our that's and that's in a flat, low lying area. Um, but actually, the ninety eight percent of our vineyards are actually up in the hills, the mountain range uh, above that low lying plain. And uh, yeah, much. And what's, more the, what's the elevation there in the it's above that, the hills? It's at, uh, up to sort of five hundred meters. That's mm -hmm. the elevation. So the cellar door is around two thirty-five, two forty. Okay. Something. What do you grow around the vineyard? What do you grow up in the hills? Do you grow different? You just grow everything. As uh, you said, it's ornamental, so it really doesn't really matter. Well, it's not ornamental. It's a. It's a. Got to use it. <laughs> yeah, we got to use it, and it actually grows great fruit because it's much lower. It's a different um, profile, I guess, to some of the fruit up in the hills. What, around what, Merlot and Semillon okay. at, uh, at Avenal, and then up in the hills around our place, a whole host, and we're experimenting with new varieties like Arnaise, Fermentino, um, Sangiovese, Mavedra, um, up in these hills, and then the, you know, the classics, Riesling, um, Sauvignon Blanc for us, Chardonnay, right. um, Shiraz, Cabernet, Pinot, so that's right. a, so it's a range. And it, look, it's a, it's a kind of a wide range for um, a winery and a winery of our size, but we've got a very reliable climate up there um, where we are. We're north of a, a mountain range called the Great Dividing Range. We're elevated, we're continental. So we get this um, very stable climate and the diurnal highs and lows, which uh, help us ripen fruit. So it's actually a very reliable region and a cool region, which lets us produce a, a wide variety of um, well, a number of varieties, yeah. Sure, sure. But your main variety, I think, is Shiraz. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. If I had a choice of one red, it'd be Shiraz. Shiraz, yeah. Shiraz. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I like this. Mm -hmm. This is ladies who shoot their lunch. Um, when I see a cute label like this, <laughs> which I my wife designed, by the way. Okay, but I immediately become suspect of what's inside the bottle. Uh -huh. I think I think you're you're selling something with a label. But tell me about how you came up with your labels. So, ladies who shoot their lunch is. Uh, uh, well, it was just a, it's a bizarre notion really. Um, it, the, the idea is actually about blending a wine to match with wild meat. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a keen hunter, but because I want to understand where my food's coming from, so I'll literally go out there and get it myself. And likewise with wine, I think it's important to understand where your wine comes from, this idea of provenance. So I believe that if you're a lady who lunches in all your finery, uh, you should uh, grab a shotgun and get out there and do it yourself. You yeah. know, it's important to understand where um, what we consume comes from. So, you know, there's, it was an evolution of an idea, I guess, and it became ladies who shoot their lunch. Now, interestingly, we, uh, with our Stone Dwellers wine, we were working with that's a... That's the other one here. That's right. Um, uh, you know, a marketing firm in Australia. We're trying to understand marketing because it's, it's not really our specialty. And they were uh, suspect about the idea of ladies who shoot their lunch. And uh, so we thought, well, um, the shackles are off. We'll just do whatever we like. As I say, my wife designed the label and, and uh, we just had a whole lot of fun with it um, because we thought it, it's a pretty um, niche concept, this concept of blending wine to match with wild meat. And then, uh, yeah, so we just had fun with it and then it turns out that that's a, a wine that's really appealed to people and it's gone on from there. But I, I take your point about um, wines with labels like that and I think Australia's done a lot of those. But you know, that we're might... doing a lot of that here in Canada now too. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're... 
that often it's interesting. It goes off in a slightly different direction, but also a little crazy. And it and it might help sell, sell the first bottle if you've got a, a wine with a snappy label, but the the wine's no good. But you know that doesn't help doesn't help me. It doesn't yeah, really no. help anyone. It only sells the first bottle. Correct. And we, you know, I think this wine stands up, and I'll be interested in your thoughts as well. And uh, well, I just tasted it. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Did um, you taste it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I always do. Every morning. <laughs> Every morning with my breakfast. <laughs> breakfast of champions. <laughs> so, do you? What do you shoot? You 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 said you like game, wild wild meat. What yeah. do you shoot? So typically kangaroos, wallabies, duckbill platypus. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no to uh, wallaby and duckbill platypus. Um, look, kangaroos from time to time, and again we eat everything uh, we shoot. But for me, um, there's this nice type crossover between conservation rabbit and uh, hare uh, introduced. Oh yeah, yeah. Pest. And farmers were compelled to control those populations anyway by local laws and so on. But you know, most people poison them, and there's this horrendous waste. So oh, that's terrible. I'd much rather um, eat, you know use them for the table, and um, you know, obviously it's free of preservatives and all those other things. So it's actually a, a really um, it has a dual benefit, I guess. And but my personal favourite is hare. Um, I think it's an absolutely delicious meat. Um, it's dark meat. Rabbits, white meat, yes. and uh, they're actually different um, species, despite yes. the fact they look very similar. And hair just has this meat that uh, it's all its own. You know, it's got this uh, unique. Um, one's flavor. like chicken, one's like turkey, or one's more like duck. Yeah, more like duck. Actually. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. And uh, but even still, it has its own character. So it's just a it's a, a flavor and a, a meat that I just absolutely adore. Yeah. How do you prepare it? Do you do it like a la a la um, a la coco vin, like with a bottle of wine in the yep, pot? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's a really good way of doing games. So games, you know, can be dry out quickly. So you want to, It's a bit like seafood. You want to cook it really fast or really slow. Yeah. And uh, you know the muscles that are working hard, like the legs, can be really really tough. Yeah. So they're generally the cuts that I'd like to cook slow um, in a stew or braise them and re- yeah, exactly right, exactly for sure. But then, of course, the uh, the back strap, the fillet on the along the back of the the animal, is nice um, and tender and beautiful if cooked quickly in a pan or quickly on a barbecue um, with olive oil and herbs and something simple like that. So that's, fabulous. that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's, this wine is the wine that I would pair with that. You know, ladies who shoot their lunch around. It's interesting. Uh, is it speaking yeah. of ladies who shoot their lunch? Does, does does your does your lady shoot her lunch? As a matter of fact, she does. You're a hunter. You're a big hunter. She uh-huh. is too. Eh? Yeah, yeah. She'll come out with me all the time. I've just bought her a twenty gauge. Um, Shotgun, which is a more manageable um, caliber for her. Yeah. So. You go on, 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 on horseback in the in the uh, in the SUVs. No, look, we will, typically will walk. Um, you know, sadly, the rabbit population uh, is such that you know I can walk for <laughs> a hundred meters and I'm off. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's actually quicker for us to go out in the field like that um, and uh, shoot a rabbit. We can have I can have it gutted, skinned in under thirty seconds. Um, you know, if I'm pushing it and uh, get back to home, you know, it's 100 metres from home, bang, job done. Whereas where we live, it's half an hour drive to the supermarket, you know, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you've got to drive back again. You know, it's actually easier for us to live. No this kidding, and the, and, and the meat's fresher than it would be if you bought it. Totally, <laughs> and preserve it free and all the rest of it. Now, wine reflects personality and character. What, does this, these, what do these wines say about you? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, I think the thing I love about these wines is that um, there's a level of restraint. Um, you know, the food friendly for me. Actually, wine is about food and wine together, um, and how they match up. And one of the things I'm really proud of is that I think Victorian wines and Strathbogie Ranges wines uh, are a really good match with food. You know, I think a lot of um, Australian wine that's drunk here in North America is. Uh, uh, can be these uh, big fruit bombs. We know why that happened. You know, it was a. Uh, it, a lot of people were following um, park points. Actually, uh, mm-hmm. I think that's driven a lot of the trend. And then I, I think you know we we're actually doing it um, how we love to do it. And if the market likes that, well then that's uh, great. And the, how we love to do it is that we love it to pair with food. Um, we love that level of restraint. We love the um, heightened aroma, um, which is also you know how we taste. And again, a good match with food. So. I do like that about this. It, it it it's it's almost a fruit bomb. It's not a fruit bomb. It's got tons of fruit, yeah. but it has tons of acidity too. That that really brings it down and makes it really good with food. Yeah, that's right. Which is what you need because a fruit totally. bomb is just terrible with yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. And the nature of game is it can be quite challenging to palate it. So you know you want it to be um, 
you want that lime and acidity in there to freshen your palate, and then also you don't want an overly extracted or tannic wine um, because when you're munching on wild meat, uh, it is challenging, and then you don't want a layer of um, you know that it also challenges your palate. So, for instance, we aged this in 140-year-old um, English oak cask, you know, big enough that I can stand up in them. And, uh, and that helps soften the structure of the wine and I think is a really important part of how we um, marry this up to game. And another thing we do is we um, co a co-fermented um, Shiraz Viognier parcel, we blend into this. What's the percentage of Viognier here? Uh, less than 5%. So, right, yeah. right. So, uh, and we're looking for that, um, that aromatic lift that comes with that and some of the textural elements. So, again, we, you know, we'll do whatever it takes in that range of wines to, to blend a wine that is fit for game and food. That's fantastic, and it's available here now. That's why you're here in Canada. So yeah, so this remind is remind people that it's there. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, in vintages. It's it's sold through really well, which I'm uh, very excited about. You get it across the country or just in Ontario? Uh, we've got it just rolling in uh, BC as well. Okay, so uh, that's good. And then we've got uh, ladies who shoot their lunch Chardonnay debuting in uh, December, which I'm very excited about. So and so, what happy. would you what would you pair with the uh, ladies who shoot their lunch Chardonnay? So the the pairing you don't go out and fish in the, in the back in the back forty. Yes, yeah, so maybe in that pond. <laughs> Fishing, yeah, totally. We've got uh, red fin. It's a uh, it's a great source of fish, but um, and we've got alpine trout just near near where we are because we're up in the mountain range. So we, uh, you know, a little um, smoked trout with uh, with a horseradish crane or something like that, and uh, ladies who shoot their lunch chardonnay, uh, an absolute dream. But um, yeah, you might cook. You know, rabbit would be a great uh, match with chardonnay, being that white right, meat. Right. If you have a lighter sauce like it, you know, something with lemon. Highlights. And therefore also chicken and yeah, yeah, exactly. veal and exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Spot fantastic. On. That's yeah. great. Thank, yeah. Thanks for coming in. I no, really, I really appreciate that. Uh, my guest has been Matt Fowles, who really does like ladies who shoot their lunch. Thanks for thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.